Welcome to Up an Octave, a podcast by Sonivia. I'm your host, Ruth Spence, founder of Sonivia, the podcast management agency that helps women and non-binary people take up space in podcasting. Up an Octave is here to support you in your podcasting journey, from how to market yourself, how to sound great, how to edit for your specific voice, and how to make your podcast feel like magic. Thanks for tuning in. Let's get into it. Welcome back to Up an Octave. Today we are talking about Pod Fade. If you had a show at one point and you just kind of stopped uploading episodes, this is the one for you. I know that at the end of the year, we kind of like to regroup and think about how things went, our goals for the new year. If your podcast was a goal and you kind of fell off the wagon but would like to resume in the new year, this one is for you. If you're not familiar with the term pod fade, let's talk about what that is. So pod fading is when a podcaster disappears without a trace, or sometimes they disappear with a trace. This isn't exactly true crime. If you have ever listened to a show that you loved, and they're like, next episode, we're going to do this, and it's going to be awesome, and then that next episode never comes, that's pod fade. Podvid can also look like seeing an episode come out and then a week go by and then there's a post on Instagram that says, hey, I'm having some personal issues. I'll be back soon. And then they never come back. So those are kind of the two methods of podfade that you see most often. Podfading is not a season end or a limited series. It is when a show just ceases to exist. It is the firefly of the podcasting world. My sci-fi nerds are going all right now because that is what it feels like. It feels like Firefly, which was an amazing show starring Nathan Fillion, if you're not familiar, and they only got one season. And it is, to this day, one of the greatest tragedies in media, in my opinion, at least. So if you don't want to pod fade go back and listen to the three P's of podcasting. That is probably the most helpful tips on how to avoid pod fading. But if you are in a position where you have pod faded and you'd like to come back in the new year, let's talk about how to do that. First off, let's talk about what an epidemic pod fading really is. If you are in this position, you are not alone. According to podcastindex.org, as of October of this year, 2023, there are 4,250,179 podcasts out there, but only 460,000 are active. And active here means that they've released an episode within the last 90 days. So what happened to those 90% of podcasts? Well, some of them just came to a natural conclusion. Some of them were never really podcasts to begin with. There was a lot of just, hey, what's up? Is this thing on? That people would kind of podcast, especially during the pandemic. We saw a lot of people who were just trying things out and they'd show up for a couple weeks and then just decide it wasn't for them. I don't necessarily consider that pod fading. To me, pod fading is when you've reached typically the six episode mark and it kind of stops being fun. It starts being too much work, and you realize that you didn't have your heart in it like maybe you thought you did at the beginning. To me, the first step of pulling out of pod fade is to kick shame out. Shame does not serve us in any facet of our life, but it certainly doesn't serve us in podcasting. So if you have been feeling guilty or embarrassed or disappointed in yourself for being in a position of pod fade, let's take a big deep breath together (sighs) and let that shame go. Get it out of here. Kick it to the curb. Put it out with the trash. It does not serve you. Leave shame behind in 2023, okay? If you have pod faded, it's okay. I often say that podcasting is not heart surgery. Even if you get it wrong, no one is going to die. 
It's okay to make a mistake. It's okay to pod fade. It's okay to miss a couple weeks. Whatever position you're in, you almost certainly haven't gone to the point where you can't fix it. Now that shame is out of the room, let's get our hands dirty and figure out how to bring your show back to life. If you want to. There is also the distinct possibility that your show may not be worth saving. And I say this with love. Depending on why your podcast experienced pod fade, you may actually not want to bring that show back. That's not to say that you don't want to be a podcaster. That's not to say that you don't have other new shows that live inside your brain that are screaming to get out. That's just saying that maybe the show that you started reached its natural conclusion. To get started on deciding if it's time to bring your show back to life or start fresh, let's conduct a podtopsy. It's kind of like an autopsy, but it's for podcasts. And figure out why you faded in the first place. Maybe you were too busy. Maybe you took on too much and thought podcasting would be easy until you were actually doing it and then realized just how much work podcasting takes. Maybe you didn't get as popular as you thought you would. Podcasting is a long game, and unless you already have a significant following, it is hard to blow up overnight. Podcasters who see success that are especially just starting out take a while to grow. If your favorite podcasters blew up, but their show is 10 years old, they started a podcast in a very different climate than you are starting a podcast. There was a lot less static to cut through, And even though only 460,000 podcasts are active, there are still 460,000 podcasts that are active. 10, 15 years ago, there were like a few thousand. It is not a lightning in a bottle. It is not a quick fix. Podcasting is a sustainable effort that does take time to grow. But if it's worth it to you, it's absolutely worth your time. Another reason I typically see podcasts fade is because of struggling with post-production. This is sort of back to the too busy, it takes too much time factor, but I do see podcasters who struggle with the editing, struggle with distributing, struggle with promoting, and that's a reason that their podcast just kind of falls off of their radar. It feels too hard, and so because it's difficult and not feeling like a worthwhile endeavor, if you're not super popular yet, it is easy to fall off because of post-production. So consider whether or not the show that you had is the show that you want. If some time has passed, you may have evolved. You may not be the same person who had that podcast. So think very carefully, listen to your old episodes, even if they make you cringe, and decide if that is still the show for you. Does the messaging still feel in alignment? Is it even the same topic that you want to talk about? Because if you had a show about a particular topic and now you feel called to talk about something else, why not just start over? Why not just start again? If you feel like this is still the show that you want to make, that's awesome. But some things to consider with that are... If you were not super popular, if you weren't writing on your name, and if your podcast hadn't kind of gotten to a place where it was big, or even moderately big, starting from scratch gives you a chance to breathe some new life in. It gives you a chance to have fresh branding, fresh analytics, a new voice in the space, and a new approach entirely. That's not to say that you can't kind of repackage old episodes with your new intro and make them feel like new episodes, even if they're re-releases. That is something that I would recommend doing is maybe like a From the Vault series. But I'm a big fan of just starting anew. If you are committed to restart your old show, think about how you're going to do that. If you want to keep your show because of the name recognition that it has, figure out how you are going to come back. The first step is to make sure that you're going to have different results this time. You can do this by planning. Again, this is really critical for the three P's of podcasting that I teach, which is plan, produce, promote. You can listen to the three P's of podcasting episode. Planning is going to give you a leg up and help stave off pod fade. Another thing is batching your content. So sitting down for a full day and recording 
five, 10, however many episodes so that you are that many weeks ahead of schedule. This is so helpful when pod fade comes knocking because you don't have to record that day. You don't have to edit that day. You don't have to publish that day. It's already done. So you have a little bit of wiggle room to wait for inspiration to hit. The other thing that you can do is to get support. Whether that's a co-host who you can share some of the burden with or hiring a professional for any element of podcasting, whether that's hiring someone in a consulting space to help keep you accountable, help provide ideas, help you sit down and plan out your show, getting some support with post-production, hiring an editor, hiring someone to support you with your social media. All of these things can help you A, stay accountable and B, lighten the burden. I have worked with a few podcasters who have experienced pod fade or were dangerously close to pod fading and have been able to kind of help pull them out of a tailspin because sometimes just knowing that someone else is waiting on those files is enough to get you to sit down and record. Once you have planned out how things are going to work differently this time, consider if your branding still feels in alignment. Do you still look the way you did in your podcast cover if you use a picture of yourself in your cover art? If not, maybe consider a new branding photo shoot or consider using podcast art that does not have a picture of you in it. This is a chance to redefine what your show looks like and sounds like. So consider, do you actually still like your podcast cover art? Is it easy to read? Is it easy to read when it's a super tiny thumbnail on somebody's phone? If the answer to any of those things is no, consider starting anew. Something else to consider is the music. Depending on how your licensing worked and where you bought your music from, you may have only bought the rights for one project and not for you as the user. So double check if you are starting your show over as a different name, as a different show entirely. Check to see what your royalty-free music, what those rights look like. This helps you avoid any kind of trademarking, copyright infringement, legal hot water that you might get yourself into. And also it provides you an opportunity to consider if you do still like that music and want to use it. How do you actually sit down and record that first episode back? The thing that I would implore you to consider is that most of the people who will hear this episode almost certainly are not familiar with your old stuff. Keep that apology really short. I think that's such a like millennial thing is these big, huge, long, drawn out videos that are, hey, I'm back and so sorry I left you. Here's what I've been up to. I feel so bad and da 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 da. Remember, we kicked shame out of the room. So you don't need to go on this long, drawn out, self berating. I'm the worst. I'm so sorry. Please forgive me. I hope you're going to listen. I will never do it again. That's not necessary. If you feel the need to have some sort of apology and go at length to address what happened, keep it short. And I would tie it in with a different intro. So I would have your intro with your music, da da da, come in. Hey, welcome to up an octave. I am here to talk to you about podcasting. If you've been with me for a while, you know that I have not been here. I have been off do 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 and I'm so excited to be back with you now. If you're new, welcome aboard. I do have a backlist of episodes. Go check those out. Anyway, on to today's topic. That is exactly how I would address it. I would not go on a long, huge rant because I think that that also gives new listeners who don't even know you and don't know that you had pod faded a little bit of a reason to be wary that they shouldn't buy in 100%. If their first interaction with you is you apologizing for not being accountable, I think that that softens people's commitment to believe that you're not going to do it again. Another thing to consider is... If your audio setup has changed, if you are in a place where you're ready to invest in nicer tech or you have invested in nicer tech, consider whether the episodes that are already in the feed match that are in alignment with how you sound now. 
It's not an automatic deal breaker. Shows should evolve over time and hopefully will all sound better after a while. But if you were like me and recording on a video gaming headset, shout out uh, to my former self, and now you're recording on a Shure SM7DB, you may want to consider letting those episodes go. Starting anew and using your great sounding voice and your great sounding tech to just be a new show. I think sometimes it can be a little distracting to have really jarring changes in quality. But again, this can be explained away if you just briefly say, hey, back in action and got some new tech and I'm excited to get started with you and then just dive on in. This is also a time to consider if your show is going to work better in a seasonal format. And I say this because A, seasons can be a little bit less work. They also help you really stay on your P's and Q's for planning out your content calendar. And also, that's a super easy way to address how you're coming back. So you can kind of consider up until your pod fade season one, season zero, depending on what that structure looks like. And then as you come back, just kind of pretend that that was an intentional pause. Thanks so much for everyone who listened to season one. I'm super excited to be back for season two. Let's get into it. Again, it's a super short, not drawn out, huge apology. You've done nothing wrong. You pod faded. Whoops. All done. And so having that season structure kind of gives you a free pass to just say, this is season two. Let's do it. That can also be kind of that new approach that I was referencing. So think about what it will take to make podcasting feel good. I think a 10 episode season is absolutely fantastic for a lot of people. You don't have to take a break between seasons. If you want to, there are ways to do that strategically. But I think that even just fragmenting your content in your mind into seasons, even if you don't ever tell your listeners, can be helpful. If you know, okay, the next 10 episodes, I'm really going to be focusing on this thing. I often talk about like RV life or like van life. I don't know why. I think it just appeals to me kind of. I have a wanderlust heart, I guess. So let's say that you had a show about van life. If you were going to have seasons, you could have a whole season talking about how to outfit a van. You don't even necessarily need to say, hey, this is a 10 episode season about how to outfit your van. But in your head, you could know, okay, these next 10 episodes are going to be this, 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 and this. And this is what I'm going to talk about. And this is how it's going to be structured. And then you can kind of mentally flip to a clean page after those 10 episodes and talk about, here's how to find places to park and spend 10 episodes talking about this works, this doesn't, blah, 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 blah. You can announce, hey, this season on the Van Life podcast, we're going to be talking about how to outfit a van. Cool. Those episodes end. Then the next time you can be like, hey, this is a 10 episode season about how to find places to park. If you want to announce it, great. If not, great. To me, any method of planning that just helps you keep things clear in your own mind is a win. Another thing that I would do if I was coming back from pod fade is I would spend a significant amount of time planning. My first show did pod fade. My, my co-host and I kind of left the ending ambiguous. We weren't 100% sure how we wanted to handle it. We were both green in the podcasting space and not really sure what was next for us. We had different time commitments that were taking place and ending just felt hard. So we just kind of disappeared a little bit. And I don't necessarily regret that. I also don't have a lot of room in my life for regret, so maybe it's regrettable. But the thing that I did know was with having experienced Pod Fade when I started my new show and certainly when I started really entering a space of consulting for clients, I started by really getting into that planning mindset. I, I did my little pod topsy on what things I would avoid, what things didn't serve me in my first show, and how. I can make different choices and guide people into a different path now. I would really spend that significant amount of time planning how you're going to do things differently, whether that is planning your content, filling up your notebook or your notes app. If you're new school, like my husband, I still like a good pen and paper. 
fill up that book. Figure out exactly what your content's going to look like. Are you going to do segments? Are you going to do this topic, that topic? What are things going to look like for your show? Create your little podcast Bible that is everything that you know about how you want to run your show. When I started this podcast, knowing that I had experienced pod fade, knowing the things that hung me up last time, knowing the things that trip up my clients, I have been very strategic about getting this podcast going because I don't want to experience pod fade again. And that even comes down to why I'm such a big believer in actually getting your episodes batched, getting ahead of the ball. This episode was recorded a long freaking time before you were listening to it. I am moving and so I know that I'm not going to have a studio for a while. And so because of that, I'm making sure that I don't have to record a new episode until like February. And that is because I can't count on having a space to record in. At the time of recording this, we're moving in a few weeks and we still don't have housing secured. That's, you know, hashtag military life for you. And so because of that, I don't know what my recording space is going to look like. I don't know how long it's going to take for my stuff to even get to the house that I don't have yet. So I can't guarantee that I'm going to have a space to record in. We're going to stay with family for three weeks while we're moving. And then we're going to get hopefully into a house. And then hopefully our stuff shows up and isn't broken. But I have a lot of variables right now. And if I wasn't planning so diligently, and if I hadn't been planning so diligently at this point for months, I don't know what would happen to my podcast. And so because of that, really thinking ahead, even if you're not planning a cross-country military move, being intentional, knowing, oh, wow, I know that summers are really busy for us. How can I not pod fade? I know that we're going to be taking trips over the summer, or I know that this thing or that thing is happening. If you get really real with yourself and have those conversations with yourself to know this is what my life is going to look like, you can save yourself from pod fading. Planning ahead is the biggest key to success. And this is also a great time to remind you about my 12-week podcast planner. It's free. The link is in the show notes. So you can go ahead and grab that puppy up. So whatever you do, think about why you started. Why did you want to podcast in the first place? Where was that love and where did it go? If you still feel the warm fuzzies about your show and it's been something that you're like, man, I wish I could get back to that. Time to do it. Get back in the saddle, take all that you've learned and make some magic happen. Oh, I'm just sliding in to tell you about my 12 week content planner for podcasts. If you are starting to think about the holiday season and what that's going to look like for your podcast, you're not going to want to miss out on this free resource that I have created to help you holiday proof your podcast. In general, I recommend having at least 12 weeks of content planned, if not recorded, at all times. This helps you dodge pod fade and keep your message resonating loud and clear while saving you stress and headaches and last minute panic. To download this free resource, check for the link in my show notes. All right, back to the good stuff. All right, today's question comes from Tina. Tina says, Dear Rue, I've been getting quite a few messages from podcast promoters claiming that they can boost my podcast's visibility. Are these inquiries worth considering or are they more likely to be spam? And how can I differentiate between genuine promotion opportunities and scams? Thanks so much, Tina. Oh, Tina. (laughs) Girl, run. I have a not so fond opinion of these podcast promoters. I really have a not so fond opinion of anyone who just slides into your DMs. As I've mentioned in the past, I kind of think of that as a podcasting unsolicited you know what pick. These quote unquote podcast promoters are kind of the bane of my existence. With the rise of the online space, you will see people who are hunting for ways to grow their audiences. And of course, because there is a need, there are people who will fulfill that wish. So whether that's Instagram followers or YouTube or whatever it is, 
there are people out there who are going to flood your inbox with, I can help you be awesome. Podcasting is not an exception. On a daily basis, I get tons of (laughs) these DMs like you, Tina, that are often not well written and feel very scammy. I can pull up right now. I've got, huh, I'll get comments. Do you want to promote your podcast? Do you have any podcast? I need podcaster who want to promote their podcast. I am a professional YouTube channel, Spotify, Apple podcast promoter. I am dedicated to helping you increase your podcast visibility and grow your new listener base in the iTunes store. Hashtag podcast marketing. So I get a ton of these and I hate to break it to you. Even if they're not malicious scams, none of them are actually going to help you. Some of these folk are genuinely just trying to earn an honest living and they're doing their best. And I I have absolute no hard feelings for that. And a lot of these do come from Fiverr or Upwork and they are non-native English speakers. So honestly, shout out to them that they know more than one language because most of us Americans do not. So I, I wouldn't say that the bad grammar is the reason to ignore them. I would say that the fact that oftentimes the methods that they are using to get you this quote unquote exposure is A, not helpful and B, unethical. Oftentimes the way that you will get these bumps in your metrics, because they will, they will get you listens, is that they're going to be vanity metrics. They're going to be bots. They're going to be not real people listening and certainly not people who are falling in love with your messaging listening. And if you don't really care who's listening, you just want to be able to say, hey, I'm a top rated podcast and I have a bajillion listeners. Sure, throw down your 10 bucks or whatever that they're charging and go for it. The minute that you stop paying, those listeners are all going to go away because they're not real people. So I'm never a fan of vanity metrics. I think that they actually kill your SEO because you'll see this huge uptick and then you'll see people, quote unquote people, running away from your show. (laughs) And that's not great for your analytics because it makes it look like people hate your show. If there are a ton of people who listen once and then they never come back, that doesn't look super hot for you. The other thing is that these individuals are not going to show your podcast care and love and attention like someone who is genuinely going to support your growth. So because they're just throwing you these vanity metrics, again, those are not going to be real listeners. They're not going to be in your target audience the way that if you hire someone who genuinely serves the podcasting community or is a social media strategist or whomever you're looking to hire that person is going to work one-on-one to find your audience and engage you with content that supports what those people are looking for. So I personally really struggle with these quote-unquote promoters because the personal touch is honestly the foundation of what Sonivia is. And so it's kind of frustrating to me to see folk who come into my inbox and ask me, if I want to have a podcast promoter when I'm like, baby, that's that's what I do. (laughs) So that's kind of why I don't love it. I also don't love it because I have had clients who've gotten burned by these folks who are now very wary to hire any kind of support. And that's just a shame because if you're in a place where you're ready to outsource and get some support with your podcast, it just hurts me to know that people are having bad experiences which can ultimately turn them off of podcasting. If they're like, I know I need help, but the help that I got was scammy. That sucks. So I'm not a fan of those. Those are, even if they're not malicious scams, those are never going to serve you. So that is my soapbox rant about how those are not actually that helpful in the long run. Thank you so much for your question. And if there's a show I can shout out for you, please let me know. If you have a question about podcasting, please send it in to rue.sonivia at gmail.com or you can just DM me on Instagram with a little voice note and we can play that on the show. I always love when you do send in what your show is as well so I can shout it out. But that is all that I have for today. 
I hope that you are ready to bounce back after some pod fade in the new year. This is our last episode of 2023. Thank you so much for coming along for the ride this year. See you next year, as all the dads would say. I will be back next week to talk about starting a new podcast. So if you have done your pod topsy and decided it's time to start from scratch, this one's for you. So in the meantime, please leave a rating or review on whatever podcatcher you're listening to. Just like your show, mine needs those to grow. You can find me over at Sonivia Studios on Instagram. I like to keep the party going over there. And if you need any support with bouncing back from pod fade, you know where to find me. You can find me at sonivia.com or you can email me directly at rue.sonivia at gmail.com. I will be back and I hope that you have a wonderful rest of the year. If you celebrate, I hope you had a Merry Christmas yesterday and I can't wait to talk to you in 2024. Thank you so much for helping me take podcasting up an octave.